Good morning, family. Welcome this morning to Bible Way Community Baptist Church Sunday morning worship service. We hope and pray that things are going well for you and your family in your neck of the woods. And as I always say, it's no accident that you have tuned in, but it's by the providence of Almighty God. God has something he wants to say and something he wants to do in your life. And so the Lord has directed you to be a part of our Sunday morning worship service. And I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we had a great time in the Lord on last Sunday. The Holy Spirit was really moving among the people. We had a great uh, day in the Lord, and we want to bring to you uh, a portion of that service. Uh, our choir is going to sing, and uh, I'm going to preach a message that was entitled, The Blessings of the Kingdom of God. Oh, yes, you want to be a part of God's kingdom because it's in God's kingdoms that you will see the blessings of God. But first, our music minister is going to come and minister to us in song, and then I will be back with the message, the blessings of the kingdom of God. So get ready, get ready. I say get ready, and let's go to church.
hands together. Praise the Lord. He's worthy. How many of you know our God is worthy? Uh, not everybody is with me yet, so. Uh, how many of you know that our God is worthy? Now that's. Amen. If you hadn't discovered it yet, that he's worthy, you are in a worship service. And worship is all about showing him that he's worthy. So you still got time to get on board and give him some praise this morning because he's worthy to be praised. We do want to thank the Lord this morning. Amen. For what he has done. Amen. Sister, get this mic here and take it over there with you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I, I don't need the mic where ain't nobody sitting. Amen. 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 It, it don't do no good. Amen. Amen. Put it where somebody is sitting. Amen. amen. I need to put it where Sister Pam is that she going to say amen. 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 <laughs> amen. Bless the Lord. All right. Amen. I don't want to be listening to the radio. Ain't nobody saying amen, amen. to the preacher. Amen. amen. That seems like a dead church. I don't want to. Anything dead need to be buried. I want to be a part of a living church. A church that's serving the true and the living God. Our God is not dead, but he's alive. Amen. Amen. Put a Bible in your hand and stand to your feet and let's recite our Bible covenant this morning. Amen. Now, if your Bible is too heavy, you just put it on your shoulder or something. Amen. And repeat after me. This is the word of God. If I obey it, blessings will come. If I disobey it, curses will come. I am what it says I am. I can be what it says I can be. I can do what it tells me to do through the power of God. This is God's idea. I believe that God's idea is the best idea. I'm committed to the biggest thing, the highest thing, the greatest thing, the best thing, which is obeying God. Therefore, my mind is made up. My heart is fixed. My spirit is ready to receive. The word, the word of God, that will, that will transform, transform my life. My life. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and open up the word of God to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. I want to look at Revelation chapter 20 verses 1 through 6. When you find it, say, I got it. Amen. And it reads like this, Revelation chapter 20, beginning with verse number one. 
And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ. A thousand years. Right. Had we saw thousand before? Yeah. Uh, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection on the second and such the second death has no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him there it is again a thousand years in those six verses we come across that word thousand four times. I, I wanted to talk about the millennium because that's what we're talking about when we say the thousand, but that sounds too theological. That's uh, a big word, so we'll just talk about the blessings of the kingdom of God. <laughs> Would that be all right? The blessings of the kingdom of God. Amen. High five somebody and tell them pastor going to talk about the blessings of the kingdom of God. Amen. The blessings of the kingdom of God. If you hadn't said amen, now is the time. Amen. Now is the time in the preaching part of the service. Amen. 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 I want to continue our study out of the book of Revelation. On last week, I preached a sermon entitled, Come to Supper. And we talked about uh, how there are two suppers mentioned here in Revelation 19. How there is a first supper that takes place in heaven called the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then we talked about there's another supper that takes place on earth uh, called the Great Supper of God. And we talked about how not everybody will show up at the same supper. Uh, there are some guests at the marriage supper. And we talked about those guests being the Old Testament saints of God, like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and then we also said that there will be some 
tribulation saints, people who was killed for the cause of Christ, they will show up at the marriage supper of the Lamb. But then we talked about at that great supper, there's some strange guests that show up at that supper of God, the great supper of God there that takes place on uh, earth and it takes place after the wedding supper because Christ will come back to this earth. Why do we need to come back to the earth? He's coming on a rescue mission because at that particular time Israel would be under attack. Like right now we thought that Israel was attacked back here in October. Uh, but you hadn't seen nothing yet. Uh, there will be folks like China and people from the east coming there to attack Israel. People from the north, uh, Russia will be coming down to attack Israel. People from the south will be coming to attack Israel. People uh, from the west over in Europe will be coming to attack Israel and, and Israel is going to be surrounded. It's not going to be a way out for Israel but all of a sudden the sky is going to pop open and Jesus is going to come down and we will come down with Jesus because we are part of his army. And, but if you can remember we're coming in our wedding garments our white wedding garment. So that lets you know that we're not coming to fight, but we're coming to watch the fight. And Jesus is going to come down here and he's going to rescue Israel and he's going to kill so many people that they're not going to have enough undertakers to bear them all. And as a matter of fact, they're not going to have enough cemeteries to put the people in. And because this war of Armageddon is the battle of all battles. They have never seen a battle like this. It's going to be so many people that's going to die during this battle. The Bible says that the blood will go as high as the horse's bridle for over 200 miles. Now what I'm thinking, I'm thinking, ladies and gentlemen, that those bodies probably is going to be stacked for uh, up to the horse's bridle and, and people are going to be bleeding, ladies and gentlemen. And because there's going to be so many people, the angel is calling for the birds to come to supper. They're calling the buzzards to come on to supper. The vultures to come on to supper. Uh, the crows to come on to supper. The ravens to come on to supper. The eagles to come on to supper. Every unclean bird, come on and get you some supper. See, if you miss the wedding supper, of the lamb then that means you are the supper in the great supper of almighty God so if I was you I'll make sure that I'm going to be a part of the wedding supper I would so much rather come to eat rather than to be eaten Lord have mercy but after Jesus, after Jesus takes over uh, that particular battle, he's not going to turn around and go on back to heaven. He's going to set up his kingdom because he don't want this to go through all of this uprising again. And so he's going to set up his millennium kingdom uh, where he will reign supreme on earth for a thousand years. Uh, uh, 
somebody may ask the question, well, what's going to happen during that thousand year reign of Jesus Christ? Well, glad you asked. Hey, let me take three things off the wagon and, and I believe these three things can help you. Matter of fact, uh, we see these three things brought out in the text. First of all, we will see the binding of Satan. And we will see the binding of Satan in the first three verses of the chapter. Look, it says, and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key. Notice the key, not the keys. The key to the bottomless pit. Jesus got the keys, uh, but he's given this angel a key. Uh, to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Did you notice the different names, the dragon, the old serpent, the devil, and Satan? Um, that's because uh, uh, we call him by different names. Somebody may say, man, they ain't nothing but the devil. Somebody else may call him Satan. Somebody else may call him the old dragon. Somebody else may call him the serpent because he was there in the Garden of Eve. Whatever name you want to call him, uh, the angel's going to arrest him. <laughs> and going to throw him in the bottomless pit according to verse 3 and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the next. How many of you know the reason that people will not come to Christ is because they've been deceived? Do you know the reason why some folks won't even come to church? Because they've been deceived. See, they think that you are deceived, that you ain't got nothing going on. But they the one ain't got nothing going on. Amen. See, they got to smoke some or drink some to get some going on. And they got to keep on drinking because I ain't feeling it yet. Give me another one. Give me another one because I ain't feeling it yet. Hello, somebody. Got to drink almost a six pack before you feel it yet. Uh, Lord have mercy. But, but you don't have to have all of that. Let me, let me get this other mic. Bring me that mic there. Amen. I'm going to turn this one on off. Amen. Amen. Because I don't want to scare somebody. Amen. Is this one on? Is this one on? This ain't as loud as mine. Mine was louder. Turn it up, brother. Turn it up. Come on now. Amen. Mine sound like the Lord was talking. Amen. That's what I want. I want it to seem like the Lord is talking through that man. Did y'all hear that lightning and thunder? That even put a little fear in me there. <laughs> but notice now, people always trying to elevate the devil and put him on the same level as the Lord. They say that God is over here and the devil is over here. And so you got the war going on between God and the devil. And the reason things are like they are, God can't really handle the devil because they are, they are like equal. But I stopped by to tell you today that God and the devil ain't equal. As a matter of fact, the devil ain't even in the same league with God. 
As a matter of fact, God is in the major league, but the devil ain't even in the minor league when it comes to God. He don't even register, ladies and gentlemen. Why is that? Because God is creator and the devil is creation. He was created by the creator. And see, the reason that I know that the devil ain't even in the same league with God is because of this scripture right here. The devil was arrested by a no-name angel. God didn't even have to send Michael down there to handle it. Notice, he didn't have to send Gabriel. He just gave the key to a, a no-name angel and said, go and arrest the devil. Do you see, God can arrest the devil any time that he wants to, when he wants to, because God is sovereign. He can do what he want to do when he want to gave this no-name angel the key to arrest it. When I looked at this, I said, now what army did he use? There ain't no army. He didn't even have to call a platoon. He didn't have to even call a squad. So I'm talking military talk this morning. Amen. Now, if you want to know what all that means now, you have to ask some of these military people. Amen. 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 But notice, he didn't have to call a legion of angels. Remember when they was arresting Jesus, Jesus said, Peter, put up the sword, bro. Don't you know I could have called? for some legions of angels. 72,000 angels, but just one angel to arrest one devil. Did you see that? I'm trying to make sure you see that this morning because we give the devil way too much credit. He's a created being. Amen with a bad attitude. That's what he is. He just done went AWOL. And notice where they told him, not in hell. Did you notice that? Did you notice? It didn't throw him in the lake of fire. Did you notice that? If, if the Bible says he was stowed in the bottomless pit, the abyss, the abyss as it's normally called, the pit. Notice, now think about it, a bottomless pit. Have you ever just felt like you just fall? And have you ever just got in an elevator and as soon as you punch the button, all of a sudden the thing just dropped? Hello, somebody. Now, can't you imagine something just dropping and it's, it's going forever? It's a feeling like you just falling forever. I don't want to be a part of nothing like that. As a matter of fact, don't you remember when Jesus was getting ready to cast the demons out of this man that was living in the graveyard? The thing that they feared the most was the pit. They said, don't throw us in the pit, please. They was begging, don't throw us in the pit. Let us go in the pigs and not the pit. And Jesus cast them into the pigs rather than the pit. See, the thing that they feared the most was the pit. And think about it. The thing that the devil feared the most, they throwed him in. Isn't that something? Now, the devil, he's a bad fella. Yeah. The reason I say he's a bad fella is because everywhere he stay, he get kicked out. He 
get evicted. He lose his home. He was in heaven. And what happened? He got evicted with his bad self. And then he came to this earth. And now look at him. He getting evicted off earth. And one day he's going to come out of the pit. And soon as he come out of the pit, that rascal hadn't changed. And he's going to get kicked off the earth again. And be thrown in the lake of fire. Where he's going to burn forever. But when Jesus come back, he's going to bind him. Now, a lot of people say, well, the devil is already bound. That's what they said happened. A lot of theologians say that he's bound. Uh, when Jesus died on Calvary Cross, they said that the devil was bound when Jesus died on Calvary Cross. No, Jesus just took his guns. He took his chief weapon, which was death. But he let him go. He took the gun, but he let him go. And see, that's the thing. That they, the day the devil used his power of deception and intimidation. Amen. Jesus done disarmed the devil. But he's still free. Oh, I, I, I know the devil ain't bound. Hadn't he been at your house lately? Hello, somebody. I know he's not bound because of the word of God. Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8, Peter says, our adversary, the devil, roam and roars like a roaming lion seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. Then over in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, when the married couples was not doing, uh, uh, the married couples was not, uh, the married couples was not doing what married couples do. Hello, somebody. Y'all praying for the pastor in the house of the Lord? <laughs> Paul instructs them to get busy lest Satan tempt you for your inconsistency. See, in other words, if a man is not meeting his wife need, or if the wife is not meeting her husband need, the devil will bring somebody else to meet those needs. So you better get busy, he says. Because Satan is looking for an opportunity and you just gave him an opportunity. See, the old folks say, don't ever give the devil a toehold. Because if you give him a toehold, he's going to get a foothold. And if he get a foothold, then he got a stronghold in your life. That's why you don't ever want to use sex as a power move. A lot of people saying, I ain't no do nothing since he been, I ain't no do nothing with him then. You better be careful. You better be careful. The devil bring somebody else who will do something with him. Are y'all praying for me in the house of the Lord? I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Let me run on, let me run on. And then Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, what? Against the wiles of the devil. And having done all you can do, he says stand. 
why would he tell us to put on the whole arm of God if the devil was bound? That's because the devil is loose. That's why whenever you get up in the morning, the first thing you need to do is put on the whole armor of God. Because you're going into a battlefield. See, the Christian life is like going to a battleground, not a playground. Too many Christians think that the devil don't supposed to be messing with you. But that's a good thing if the devil is messing with you. You ought to be bumping into the devil. Because if you ain't bumping into the devil, that means you're walking with the devil. So the first thing that's going to happen when Jesus come back is the binding of Satan. But then number two, there's the privilege of the saints. The privilege of the saints. Look at verse number four and five. Are y'all praying for me this morning in the house of the Lord? Verse four says, and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw souls, somebody say souls souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast neither his image neither had received his mark upon their forehead or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years was finished this is the first resurrection oh look at the privilege of the saints one of the privilege that the saints are going to have in the kingdom and they're going to be able to be judges on thrones there in the kingdom of God. Notice it says here, uh, it lets us know who's going to be judges. It's going to be the tribulation saints. They will be judges in the kingdom of God. Are y'all with me, Bible way? The scripture here says, and I saw souls of them. Let me ask you a question. What happened to people when they died? Uh, do they soul just sleep or do they go somewhere if you are a child of God uh, when you die you go to be with the Lord we can't see your soul but God knows exactly where the soul is at and notice he said I saw the soul of them that was beheaded uh, for the witness of Jesus. That word beheaded mean they got the axe. That meant that they got the axe. They, they, they got the guillotine, if you please. And they was beheaded for the cause of Christ. Why were they beheaded? The scripture says because they did not worship the beast. Who's the beast? That's the Antichrist. Neither his image. Remember, he put up an image uh, for them to worship him. But they did not worship his image. Neither had they received the mark. What was the mark? It was the 666. And they did not receive none of that. And it's good that they didn't because now they're going to be judges in the kingdom. Amen. And notice, a lot of people during the tribulation period... Uh, even though they was not beheaded for the cause of Christ, there's going to be a lot of folks that did not worship the beast, the Antichrist, or receive his mark, or did not worship the image. And because of that, even though they lived through it, how many of you know uh, that suffering is often a part of the Christian life? Uh, I say suffering is all a part of the Christian life. Matter of fact, let me just bag that up even and let you know that suffering is a part of this life. Amen. You're going to suffer whether you suffer for Christ 
or you not suffer for Christ. You still gonna suffer, but I would rather for my suffering to pay off. See, my suffering is gonna pay off after a while. And these people suffering paid off after a while. Now, these folks who suffered in the tribulation period, now they are acting as judges in the kingdom of God. But not only will they be judges, you know, Jesus talked about how his 12 apostles will be judges in the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 28, you can write it down. Matthew 19, and verse number 28, Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, that ye who follow me in regeneration when the son of man shall sit in his throne on his glory ye also shall sit upon it is 12 thrones judging the 12 tribe of Israel so the 12 apostles they gonna act as judges in the kingdom but if you think that's something I'm looking at some judges this morning because you as a child of God, you who are a part of God's church, you're going to be judges in the kingdom. Oh, let me run to the Bible right quick and get the address. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 2 and 3. I say 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3 says, Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matter? You're going to judge the world. You mean you can't judge that little situation in your home? Lord have mercy. Know ye not that ye shall judge hideous angels. How much more the things that pertain to this life. Oh, it's a privilege to be a judge in the kingdom. Oh, you think about that. You think about that. It says we're going to judge angels, and I believe that we're going to be judging demonic angels. Yeah, them, them, them angels that came over to your house, and they've been coming over there. Oh, yeah. You can't have no devil meant without that devil showing up. If you got some devil men at your house, that's because a devil is loose. But think about the devil that calls you to do this or calls you to do that. You're going to be judging that devil one day. Somebody ought to say, ooh, we man. Oh, I know I'm preaching this morning in the house of the Lord. Somebody ought to be doing a break dance this morning. Hello, somebody. Lord have mercy. You know, I remember before the uh, 1992 war, you know, the, um, what did they, the Desert Storm. Actually, I, I'm looking for the one that uh, George Bush Jr. Uh, that was the 2001. That was the 2001 because that's when they uh, uh, do a manhunt for Saddam. Because remember Saddam for about 20 years they had been dealing with Saddam and what have you because Saddam Hussein remember uh, 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 he was a tough cookie uh, with his people. I mean, he would gas his own people. He would execute his own people. I mean, he was the prosecutor, the judge, the jury, and the executioner all at the same time. But one day when our army got over there and our army got a manhunt, uh, to get Saddam and they had tracked him down to a farm house and they finally found them and they called it a spider hole or spider web and what it was it was a little bitty hole 
and they got him out of there and they put him on trial and he was condemned to death by hanging and they hung him and the man that executed him the last thing that he told him before he pulled the rope was go to H-E-L-L. Hello, somebody. Amen. Now you think about it. The man who at one time acted as the judge, now he was being judged. Hello, somebody. How many of you know that Christians and followers of Christ, they are often being judged. But the tide is going to twist one day. It's going to flip. Uh, where one day God's people who had been judged, now they're going to be the judges. In other words, God is going to flip this thing. He's going to turn this thing around. How many of you know that God is a turnaround God? That's why the Bible says that the first is going to be last and the last is going to be first. That's all right. That's all right. I can be at the last of the line right now. But someday, one day, those at the back going to come to the front. Isn't God a good God? He going to turn things around. I say he going to turn things around. Isn't God a good God? He going to turn it around. That's the privilege. That's the privilege of the saints. But let's run on a little bit further because it's going to get gooder and gooder. Amen. That's what they say in the country. Amen. Don't y'all be acting like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all from the country. Are oh, you got kin folks that's from the country. They just dropped you off up here. Now you saying that you've been in the Dallas all your life. I'm up here in Dallas. It's Dallas. It ain't Dallas. <laughs> Even Pastor Wilbur knows that. <laughs> all right. Amen. Number three, the blessings. The blessings on the saints. The blessings. I want you to see the three blessings. I done, uh, I done dealt with you long enough. Let me just take the three blessings off the wag. Verse six, it says, bless. Somebody ought to say bless. <laughs> Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Somebody ought to say blessed. blessed. That's a blessing, that's a blessing. Uh, amen. You know, blessed, we're talking about happiness inside out. See, most people are blessed, but they are blessed outside in. They have to have some on the outside to make them happy. They got to have the car or the car got to work right for them to be blessed. Uh, everything got to work right for it to be blessed. A lot of times people get all upset because they got a flat. Thank God you got a car. You're making a big deal out of a flat. I thought something was wrong. Hello, somebody. Let me go on. Let me go on. Amen. Amen. Listen. Yeah, let me just say it. You, if you got a flat, most cars got a spare. Hello, and if you ain't got a spare or you don't want to change it, you got these motor club plate people. 
and most, most, and I know most women folks, they got it. They got the triple A or whatever the other A or the, uh, hello somebody. Are y'all praying for me in the house of the Lord? Got to pray for the preacher. Yeah, have mercy. Amen. Amen. Just, I mean, people, they fall out over a flat. Let, let me go on. That's done, got stuck in my spirit. Let me get on. Amen. I want to talk about the blessings. Uh, the first blessing is here. There's a blessing of no more death. You won't ever die again because you're part of the first resurrection. Yeah, now the, can I, I got to do some teaching here because the, the resurrection, uh, that first one come in stages. Uh, Christ initiated the first resurrection. Matter of fact, it already done began. Christ initiated when he arose from the grave. That was the beginning of the first resurrection because right after him there in Jerusalem on that Easter morning, remember there was other folks that got up out the grave. And then one day Jesus is going to come back uh, to the clouds and those who are in the church, they're going to be raised from the dead and we who are alive uh, we will be changed and gone home to be with the Lord. All of that is still part of the first resurrection. And then these people who died in the tribulation period, they're going to be part of the first resurrection. And then those Old Testament saints uh, like Daniel and David and King Hezekiah, they're going to arise at the end of the tribulation period. So all of them will be a part of the first resurrection. But if you don't make the first resurrection, that means you're going to get up in the second resurrection. See, everybody is going to get up. But which resurrection are you going to be a part of? Are you going to be a part of that first resurrection? Are you going to be a part of the second resurrection? If you're a part of the first resurrection, that's the resurrection of the righteous. The, the second resurrection is the resurrection of the unrighteous. The first resurrection, the people, they are born twice and die once. But the people who makes the second resurrection, they gonna die twice because they was only born once. That's why the Bible says you must be born again. And not no if and doubt of what about it. You must be born again so that you won't participate in the second resurrection. Jesus wants you to be a part of the first resurrection. Oh, if you can be a part of that first resurrection, then you are blessed. Uh, the first resurrection. But then not only that, uh, you're going to be priests in the kingdom. Oh, you're going to be priests in the kingdom. Right here in the text, the Bible says, and but they shall be priests of God. Oh, it's a blessing to be a priest in the kingdom because see in the kingdom you're going to have uh, you're going to have moral people but you're also going to have immortal people in other words we are moral people today yeah we are people who uh, have the capability to die because of indwelling sin lives on the inside of us and so we can die. As a matter of fact, every breath you take, you one breath closer to your death date. Hello, somebody. 
but in the kingdom of God, we're going to be immortal. Uh, uh, because we have died one time and we're not going to die. Uh, no more. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, you ought not have to be an amen sister to say amen on that. Hello somebody. Uh, anybody ought to say amen on that. Lord have mercy. Buster ought to say amen on that. Rufus ought to say amen on that. Boo boo and, and Bubba ought to say amen on that. Hello somebody. I'm talking about somebody who just come into the church and they hear the preacher say that if you got Jesus in your life and you done died one time, you ain't no die no more. Oh, glory, hallelujah. We're going to be priests in the kingdom because, see, those people will have to be saved. The mortal people will have to be saved. And so uh, uh, we're going to be priests. And so we're going to be teaching them and, and leading them to Christ. Matter of fact, that word priest means in the Latin, bridge builder. How many of you know a true child of God, you know a true child of God, because a true child of God is not trying to build a wall between people. A true child of God is always trying to build a bridge between sinful man and holy God. And we are there in between trying to get sinful man to come to this holy God so that God can do what? Forgive them of their sins. That's why you ought to be able to forgive anybody regardless what they done done in your life. Let me say that again because I know that's preaching material. You ought to be able to forgive anybody regardless what they done done to you all because of what Jesus has done for you. He has forgiven you of your sins. You ought to be able to forgive somebody else of their sin. The reason a lot of people don't want to forgive is because they have a high opinion on their self. A more high opinion than they ought to think. You're thinking too high about yourself. You ain't all a dead in a bag of chips. We are priests in the kingdom. We are standing in between trying to bring somebody to Jesus. That's your job. Somebody said, what do the Lord want me to be a bridge? Because see, the bridge is out. That's why a lot of times, even in a bad marriage, God said, don't be so quick to run out of there because you can act as a bridge. To bring that man, that sinful man or that sinful woman to Jesus Christ. But if you get out of there, then God ain't got a bridge to work through. Oh, that's a blessing to be a bridge. I don't know about you, but it's a blessing to be a bridge. Man, I have to go home across the Mississippi River Bridge. And if they ever say that bridge is out, that's too much water for me to try to swim across. Thank God. Every time I go home, I see that bridge. Thank God for the bridge. And thank God for a Christian. Because that Christian is a bridge. But the third thing, the third thing, the third thing, it says, and shall reign with him a thousand years. In other words, you're going to be kings. I say, you're going to be a king. King in the kingdom. Isn't that something? We're going to be kings in the kingdom. I don't know how God is going to set it up. 
I don't know if he's going to have you that like some to be the, like the king of, uh, of Texas and the king here of Louisiana and the king here of Arkansas and, and Alabama and the king of Mississippi and all of them are setting up under the king of kings and the Lord of Lord who's none other than Jesus Christ. Yes, you are indeed a king, but you got to bow even to the greatest king, the Lord Jesus Christ. So thank God that we're going to be kings in the kingdom. Oh, God is going to turn this thing around, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We're going to be kings in the kingdom, and we're going to be priests in the kingdom, and we're never going to die no more. Oh, that's good news. Because some folks going to die. I said, y'all done got quiet on me here. Let, let me just, uh, listen, let me just show you out of your Bible. And we're going to show you this and we're going to shut it down. Would that be all right? I'm going to show you this and I'm going to shut it down. Would that be all right? I said, would that be all right? Isaiah, Isaiah 65. I just want you to see it out of your Bible so you can see how it's going to be in the future. Pastor is telling you how it's going to be in the future. Quit listening to these false prophets trying to prophesy and they ain't prophesying, they prophesy lying to you. <laughs> you need to look at the Bible because if the Bible didn't say it, you just guessing. You just preaching out of your own imagination. <laughs> Isaiah 65. See, the Bible show you how it's going to be in the future. Verse number 17 through 25. We're going to just read this and we're going to shut it down. Would that be all right? It says, verse 17, it says, For behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Amen. Quit sweating what you're going through down here. Amen. You ain't going to remember it no more once you get in the kingdom. Amen. Hello, somebody. Yeah. If you're tired and had a flat, praise God. Because they done fixed ties now, but they're a whole lot better. It used to be you couldn't hardly go out of town on a uh, on an out of town trip unless the, uh, your tie would bust on you. But now you can almost go three and four years without having a flat, or uh, you can go a, a long time unless you get a nail or something. So praise God, how the technology is a whole lot better today. Amen. They used to didn't even have no AAA. So praise God you got AAA. Amen. Hello, somebody. What if you was born from a uh, hundred years ago when they didn't even have no car? Lord have mercy. Let's, let's go on a little bit further. Let's go on a little bit further. Verse number 18, y'all making me sweat up in the house of the Lord. Verse 18, it says, but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I created. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. Think about it. We're talking about Jerusalem. That's the city uh, that's always under attack. It, it's always in a war or there's a rumor of a war. But God says Jerusalem is going to be a place of nothing but joy and happiness. Verse 19, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her. Now the voice of crying, there shall be no more dense an infant of days, nor an old man that has not filled his days. For a child shall die a hundred years old. But the sinner being an hundred years old shall be a curse. Think about it. We're living in a world today where babies die right after they're born. Some are still born. 
Some die of crib death. Babies are dying in their infancy. But the Bible says in the kingdom, in the kingdom a baby will die a hundred years old. In other words, a person who's a righteous saint of God, if they die a hundred years old, they say, now I was a baby. They were nothing but a baby. And a sinner who don't live nothing but a hundred years old, folks going to say he must have been doing something bad. Yeah, I, I knew he wouldn't live out half his day. How many of you know God don't have to let you live out? Half your days. He may have it scheduled uh, 2050, but if you're not right with God, God said they're doing too much devil, man. Let me just cut it short. And that's what it's going to be. They can say that man was cursed because he only lived to be a hundred. Today, if a person lived to be a hundred, we'd say, what's the secret? <laughs> you blessed. Is it the water? I mean, what is it? We're ready to take some notes. Look, look, look. Go, go a little bit further. I'm almost done, y'all. Stay with me to the end. Verse 21. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall build and another and not. A, they shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. And my elect shall uh, long enjoy the work of their hands. In other words, God's going to turn things around because Israel is, is constantly through their history. It has been an occupied country. Uh, in Jesus' day, the Roman government had came there and occupied Israel. And when another foreign uh, government would come in, they would often take the people's houses and they would eat their food that they didn't even plant, drink the water out of wells that they didn't even dig, stay in people's houses that they didn't even build. But God says, in the kingdom, and that'll never happen again. No more, not up under my watch. Jesus says, no, you're going to stay in the houses that you done build. You're going to eat the food that you planted, and you won't have to worry about it, not up under my watch. Somebody ought to say, thank the Lord. And the Bible says here, uh, they shall not plant and another eat, for as the days of a tree are the days of my people. Think about it. In other words, what God says, I'm going to take it back to how it was before the days of Noah. Before the days of Noah, it was kind of like that they was living in a, oh, I forget what you call it, but it's a, it's a, like a force shield that's around the earth that keeps the sun from beaming in so hard on you like it do now. It's, it's the, like the greenhouse effect. That's the word I was looking for. As a result, the people could live to be 700 years old, 800 years old. 900 years old, like Methuselah, 996 years old. Uh, you're going to have people living to be a thousand years old there in the kingdom because a tree can live to be a thousand years old. Verse 23, and they shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, here it is, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. You talking about justice. It's going to be justice right now. Before you can even call, God said, here the answer is right here. Before you even speak, God said, that answer is right there. You're talking about justice. That's going to be right now justice. Somebody said that God is a right now God. And we're going to see that he's going to be a right now God. Verse 25, and the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion 
shall eat straw like a bullock, and the dust shall be uh, that serpent meat, and they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, said the Lord. Notice there's going to be peace in the animal kingdom. Do you see, not only is God going to affect it in the human sphere, but there's going to be so much peace that even the animals are going to be getting along with one another. Amen. Animals that couldn't get along, now they're going to get along all because Jesus done came to town. Because Jesus is on the throne. Oh, Lord, have mercy. The Bible says here, the wolf and the lamb are going to feed together. Think about it. And the lion and the uh, lamb, they're going to be playmates there in the kingdom. And you don't have to worry about no snakes because the snakes won't even bite you in the kingdom. All because of who's in charge. And see, we uh, often are looking into politics and we want politics to bring us a leader. And this is why people today have 24 hours a day news because the news is all about the politics. And in the politics, folks, uh, they believe that if we can just get the right man in the White House, then everything will be all right. The Democrats believe that they can get the right man in the White House, things going to be all right. The Republicans believe if they can get the right man in the White House, everything going to be all right. Even the parties, people say, if you just got to be a part of the right party, and so we can fix everything because this party is going to make everything all right. And so you got families falling out over, you ought to be with the Democrats or you ought to be with the Republicans. And do you know that both of these parties, they have animals animals as their mascot. All the Democrats, they have the donkey as their mascot. The Republicans got the elephant for their mascot. Ladies and gentlemen, let me let you know that this thing is too big for an elephant to solve. It's too big for a donkey to solve. This thing is so big, it's going to take the king of kings. It's going to take the Lord of all lords to come down here and solve it. It ain't going to be a party, but it's going to be a person named Jesus Christ. He's going to come back to earth, and when he comes, there's going to be peace. I say, when he comes, there's going to be peace. There's going to be peace in the house because there's peace in the heart because there's going to be peace in the church. There's going to be peace in the city. There's going to be peace in the country. There's going to be peace among the animals. Oh, it's just like John P. Keith said, there's going to be peace in the valley. There's going to be joy in the valley. There's going to be love in the valley. There's going to be Jesus in the valley who's bright and the morning star and he's amen. He's amen and he's amen. As I come to a close, I can recall when my dad-in-law got transferred on his job. They closed down the plant there in Brookhaven, Mississippi, and they transferred him to the other plant over in Law, Mississippi, about 80 miles away. So my mom-in-law and dad-in-law, they had to move, and they just had to get a, another house, and they had to get their daughter into another school, but, and then they had to find them a church. It was easy to find a house, it was easy to find a school, but it was kind of tough to find a, a good church. Because just because a church got a steeple on it, that don't mean it's a church. Just because they got a communion tape, don't mean it's a good church. 
just because they got a nice looking pulpit don't mean it's a good church just because the preacher got a Bible don't mean he's preaching out of the Bible so they was going from church to church trying to find a good church and then all of a sudden one day they called us and say we went to this lit church and we enjoyed it we think we're gonna go back the next Sunday so they went back the next Sunday and they went back the next Sunday and then they went back the next Sunday and they end up joining that lit church. They say they number 30 or 40 people, but we like that lit church because the preachers stay with the word and the people are friendly, they're nice, loving group of people. And we believe we can grow with that lit church. And then they start asking us, when y'all coming home? Because they wanted us to go to their church. See, that's how you know that you got a good church and you proud of your church it's when you start recommending if you go into a church but you don't ever recommend you need to get on out of that church you need to go to somewhere that you can recommend you be able to tell Buki to come on over to my church Buki anyway anyway we, we told them, we're we going to come, we're going to come. And every time that we would call, they say, y'all got to come to our lit church. So one day we finally went home and we went to their lit church. And it was a nice lit church. I mean, the people, the ushers, they was friendly. The people was friendly. The choir, about seven or eight of them up there. Uh, but that's all right. They were singing once and like it was 50 up there. I mean, I mean that lit church and they was on fire for the Lord. The lit preacher came out and he preached and what have you. I said, this is all right. I mean, they, I mean, they jamming up in the house of the Lord. They was having a good time. And, and, and I really enjoyed it because afterwards they fed us. <laughs> and that always helped. That always helped. That, that was a Sunday that they had some dinner once. Uh, Y'all going to stay around? Oh, sure. We going to stay around for some dinner. <laughs> Amen. We stayed around for the dinner. The dinner was good. And uh, after we, we went on back on over to the house, and Mama Law said, what did y'all think about our lit church? I told her, Mama, I, I liked it, the lit church. I mean, the people was friendly. And, uh, everybody seemed like they was in love and the harmony. It looked like they was on one accord with one another. And I said, I, I liked it. And the preacher stayed with the word, like you said. Yeah, yeah, I, I like the lit church. And Mama in law said, you know, uh, the reason I like that lit church, she said, because they are true to their motto. I said, well, what is the church motto? She says, our church motto is, a place where everybody is somebody. Do you know that's what it's going to be like in the kingdom of God? It's not going to be a place where you got the, the big eyes and the little U's. But it's going to be a place where everybody is somebody. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm looking forward to going to a place where everybody, I say everybody, I say everybody is somebody. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you for who you are. The God who is here. And you still answer prayers. Lord, if there is somebody who's not ready to be a part of the first resurrection, will you touch their hearts right now? For they can be a part of the first resurrection. Touch right now. That they can be a part of a kingdom. 
where everybody is somebody. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, at this time we will celebrate the Holy Communion. On the last night that Jesus was with his disciples, he took bread and he said, this is the body that is broken for you and for many. As often as you eat of it, you show that you have faith in me until I come again. Hold it up, let me consecrate it. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would consecrate this bread. And then as we partake of it, consecrate our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. After supper, they took a cup. Jesus says this cup represents his blood of the New Testament. As often as you drink of it, you show that you have faith in him until he come again. Hold your up your cup and let me consecrate it. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would consecrate this juice symbolizing the blood of Jesus. I ask, dear God, that you will consecrate it, but then consecrate our lives. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That concludes our Sunday morning worship service as well as our communion service this time benediction now may the grace of our lord and our savior jesus christ the love of god the sweet communion of his holy spirit rest rule and abide with you now henceforth and forevermore and all god's children say it amen god bless you see you wednesday night <laughs>